Hey everyone, it's great to see you all again. There's been a photo editing technique or effect that has absolutely exploded recently on social media. You almost can't even look at Instagram or Facebook without seeing this effect. And of course, I'm talking about the Orton effect. Now, if you don't know what that is, the Orton effect is like putting a soft focus filter on your photo to give it that dreamy, ethereal look. It makes part of your images a bit blurry, but also increases the color and contrast, making your photo a bit more magical. It's named after photographer Michael Orton, who really popularized this in the 1980s. By sandwiching two slides together, one sharp and one out of focus, he was able to create this effect. And in today's video, we are gonna go over what makes the Orton effect so popular, what exactly it is, and I'm also gonna show you a couple of different ways that you're able to achieve this effect. The first way, we're going to start in the Lightroom, and the second technique, we're gonna hop into Photoshop. I hope you all enjoy. So why is the Orton effect so popular? The effect is so popular on social media because it gives a unique, almost painted, appealing look to your photos. It can make ordinary images look more artistic and captivating, which really catches people's attention as they scroll through their feeds. Plus, it adds a bit of nostalgia or charm to images, making them stand out in a sea of similar posts. So let's dive into Lightroom so I can show you an example and one of the two ways that you can achieve this effect. So this is an image that I took on my trip to Cannon Beach in on the Northern Oregon coast. And as you can see that the colors are popping, it was a beautiful sunset. I love how the clouds look. And I was not expecting this great of a sunset. So I just kind of threw something together. I really like how this turned out with the light on the jellyfish here. Um, and then also kind of how the top of the jellyfish mimics the shape of the rock. Although I probably could have gotten down a little bit closer to the ground to give that more of a 3D effect, but I still like how this image turned out. So this is the basic edit that I put on. As you can see, I go through, this is after photo stacking the image and then putting a couple more edits on and then also a couple more masks. So here's before all those masks and here is after. So the first way we can achieve this effect is that we could go up to the masking section. We can add a mask and just add a luminance range mask. Now really what this effect does is that it brightens and softens the parts of the photo that's affecting. It almost creates a glow effect. So you wouldn't want the shadows to be affected as much because it is a glowing effect and usually shadows don't glow. We're gonna drag this slider to the right until we affect the highlights that we want. And that's mostly for this image going to be the sky and then maybe feather it a little bit as well. But we also don't want the brightest brights. We can actually affect the sky a little bit more, affect the sun a little bit more there and then maybe feather this a little bit less so we get most of the sunset here. So it's gonna affect most of the highlights, it's just gonna make it glow, it's gonna give it a dreamy, more ethereal look. So if we go down here, we're gonna to want to bump the exposure just a little bit, maybe by 0.15, up to 15. We're gonna increase the contrast by maybe 25, and then decrease the highlights to negative 20, about negative 20. So the reason that we want to increase the exposure but decrease the highlights is so that we can bump up the brightness, but we don't clip any highlights. It really just brings a bit more information back from those bright parts so that nothing is blown out. So if we look at the before and after of just what we did there, here is the before and then here is after. So it really just brought a bit more and actually so that is before and after and actually I might bring a little bit more contrast into that and also a bit and also take the highlights down just a little bit more because it seems a little bright and so that is the brightening effect that it does now we want to affect the softness or the glow effect so we'll go down to the effects section in the masking menu and we're gonna we're gonna increase the texture just a little bit so that it's not completely almost out of focus or blurry and then bring down the clarity by quite a bit, maybe negative 20, negative 25, depending on your photo. And then we're also gonna to wanna to bring the dehaze down a little bit, and that'll add a bit of softness to the photo. Sometimes you can do a little bit more than negative five, but for this photo, it's already pretty soft and we don't wanna lose the colors too much, so I'm actually gonna bring that down just to about negative five. And so this is just the simplest way that you're able to do this in Lightroom. And I might actually bring the contrast up a little bit, maybe 
bring down the highlights. I do want to keep the colors a little bit. And also, to, as far as the dehaze goes, this photo already had a lot of haze coming off the water. So that's another reason I didn't want to necessarily affect those as much. I'm also going to bring these up a little bit. We don't need to affect as much of the shadows there. So if we bring this down, we go all the way down. This is before and this is after. This is before and this is after. So we decrease the contrast here by quite a bit. And then also decrease the exposure. That was a little much. And the nice thing about doing it in Lightroom too is that you can you have this amount slider. So if say you went overboard like I just did, you can always bring this slider down or up if you didn't put enough. But for me, I usually tend to go a little bit overboard. So it's nice to have this amount slider to kind of um, figure out how much of the effect you wanted to add. So that is just a simple way. There is before and then after, before and after. And again, I'm not going to I'm not going to affect it too much and this is a way that you're able to do it in Lightroom. Although I usually like to do this effect in Photoshop, it gives you a little bit more customization and you can affect the softness a little bit more as well. So let's delete this mask there and then we're going to go and we're going to hop into Photoshop. So we're going to right click, go up to edit in and Adobe Photoshop. So jumping into Photoshop here. We're going to come down, select the background layer. Then we're going to duplicate that layer by pressing Control or Command J. We're going to duplicate that layer. Then we're going to come up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And then you're going to want to set this number to the amount of megapixels your camera is. So I've usually, I have a 24 megapixel camera. I'm going to set this number to 24 or somewhere around that number. It doesn't have to be exact. And then we're going to set the blur there. Then we're going to come up to Image Adjustments and go to Brightness Contrast. We're going to set the brightness to about 50 and then the contrast between 70 and 75, usually on the lower end. And we'll press OK. And obviously this is not the effect we're going for and it's affecting the whole photo. We just want to, have to affect the highlights. So we're going to come over to the Channel section and we're going to select the blue channel. And that is just going to affect the highlights not the shadows of the photo. If, if we go what's in white is going to be affected and what is in black is not going to be affected. So if we come down here and click this little dotted circle um, that is going to select that area and we're going to come over to layers and then create new layer mask. It's like the rectangle with a circle in the middle and that is going to place the effect on only the highlights. And obviously this is again a bit too much. So what we're going to want to do is come down and bring the opacity down. Usually I like to have the opacity between 10 and 20 um, and then stick around 15. So let's see. And this is much simpler to show the before and after as well. So if we do the before and the after, the before and the after and maybe just a little bit less there. But as you can see, this really brings that dreamy, nostalgic, almost ethereal look to your photos. And this isn't an effect that I apply on every one of my photos, but ones that I really want to enhance the softness, colors, contrast, and the brightness of the highlights are really the photos that I add this effect to. So I hope you all enjoyed and learned something from this week's video. Remember that I post every Sunday at noon Pacific time and then every Saturday I come out with a new YouTube short. But I'd be so grateful if you could subscribe to my weekly newsletter where I send out weekly updates. I also have print sales on my website and for daily updates you can follow my Facebook page. But other than that, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.